Hello, dear friends. Today, I would like to share with you a very important information about the Arctic that was voiced in the conference Global Crisis. This already affects everyone. Kevin Hester from New Zealand gave a detailed explanation about water vapor, mitten, and many more that significantly deteriorate the situation with climate change. And I suggest to watch Kevin Hester's interview from the above mentioned conference. Greetings, everyone. I'm very glad to be here on this conference, Global Crisis. This will really affects everyone. End quote. That's an exact, a perfect description of your conference. My name is Kevin Hester. I'm an abrupt climate change researcher from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, my background is in engineering and ocean sailing. The situation in the Arctic is catastrophic. Uh, the statistics and the amount of melt that's going on is unprecedented. And one of the problems that we have with what we are seeing in the Arctic now is inertia in the climate system. There's a 10 to 30 year lag between when emissions go into the atmosphere and when the full effect of those emissions manifests. So the chaos, chaos that we're watching now was baked in last century. This is a very, very dire predicament we find ourselves. One of the problems that we have is we have unleashed a multitude of what the client's community calls tipping points or feedback loops. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, the loss of the Arctic sea ice means you lose reflectivity. So what happens is when the ice was there, the incoming solar radiation would bounce off the ice and go back into space, only leaving a minor fraction of the warming behind. But with the lack of sea ice, all of that light is absorbed into the oceans and the, and the warmth is contained. That's one feedback. As we broil the planet, for every one degree C we heat the atmosphere, we get 7% more water vapour in the atmosphere. And water vapour is an enormous greenhouse gas. It's, it's actually the most prolific greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. So at the rate that we've warmed the world now, we've increased the loading of, of water vapour by over 10%. That's a massive feedback. Okay, another important feedback that I'd like to talk about is methane. As the permafrost melts, and until recently, 24% of the Northern Hemisphere was covered in, in permafrost. People don't get how big this Arctic region is. And methane is something to up, upwards of 100 times more powerful a greenhouse gas than carbon. So you can see why that becomes an issue. And then I think probably the, the feedback loop that we're most concerned about, the Arctic researchers that I know, is the potential for destabilizing the methane class rates, which are stores of methane that are held in a chemical cage at the bottom of the ocean. And that, chem that, those, that methane is kept stable by a combination of pressure, by the water pressure above it, and temperature. And as a result of warming the, the planet, the water is getting warmer, so that takes us closer to a tipping point with the class rates. The problem with methane is that the difference between methane and carbon is the warming from methane is almost instantaneous. Whatever methane gets released within weeks, that warming will be felt in the atmosphere. So what I expect to happen when, when we get these increasing levels of methane is that it'll get hotter faster, and the main danger that poses is for crops. You know, um, Ukraine is one of the, the breadbaskets of the planet, and it's warming up. And this is the same thing that's happening in the United States and Canada. Crops are just failing already because of the heat, the amount of warmth and, and the attendant droughts that go with it. So we're already seeing the crop failures taking place today. We don't have to wait a long time to see this chaos unfolding. I think that could happen this decade. What people don't get is non-linearity in the climate system. That's why people think that myself and, and Professor Guy McPherson and John Boyle from the um, European Commission, Sam 
Karana from the Arctic News blog, we all believe that we're heading for double-digit warming. And people call us alarmists, but, you know, <laughs> it's an alarming situation. So now that we've just thrown our arms in the air and we're rushing headlong off the cliff and there's no slowing down. All the talk about emissions reductions, it's talk. Even with the pandemic and all the planes um, let, grounded and no one travelling around the world, emissions went up last year. There's our feedback loops. Well, I think very soon it will crash industrial civilization. You know, this, with industrial civilization and the and the dominant ec economic system on the planet of capitalism, is it's all about credit and it's all about borrowing from the future. We've been borrowing from our children's future all my life. And what I think will happen is industrial civilization will crash. And that could happen very soon because people will see that we've lost control. Not that we ever had control, but we've driven the system into a, in a whole new paradigm. So I think very soon we'll see industrial civilization collapse. I think everyone should do what, they should follow their hearts and do what they think is right. But there's no turning this ship around. We've already gone off the cliff. It's sinking. But what we can do is we can prepare uh, psychologically and personally within our own circle with our families and our friends, and we can tell the truth, and, and especially to the youth. It's really important that the youth understand how dire the situation is. People say, oh, no, we can't tell them. That's bullshit. If you want to lie to the youth, lie to the youth. But I'm not going to do that on my watch. I'll go to my grave telling the truth of what I believe is happening. And, you know, I'll re reiterate, I don't for a second want to be right. I would love it if you guys could call me in 12 months and say, Hester, come on the show again. Uh, we want to rubbish, about, rubbish you about all the things that didn't happen. I would love that. I'd love that more than anything. So I, I think we're, we're going through this extraordinary learning curve now about how all the models have undershot. And a, a, an important detail to think about when we're talking about um, these targets that have been set by organisations like the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their, their predictions for the future include carbon capture and storage at scale. They calculated that we would have come up with a solution. Their, their whole representative concentration pathways have a factor of fantasy technology factored into them. It's lunacy, complete lunacy. But the problem with this predicament is it's not a problem, it's a predicament. We can't fix this. We can mitigate. We can take our foot off the accelerator. We can do the right thing, but we can't fix it. And it's important for people to, to understand that or else they'll frustrate themselves to death trying to fix the unfixable. I'm very happy to be a part of this project and thank you for including me. Good luck with what you are up to. I admire you enormously for doing what you're doing.